Hello and welcome back to Guillotine Chemistry in my third video in scientific literacy. And this is a big one. This is multiple lines of evidence. And so by the end of this, you should know what that means and how it gives us strong scientific consensus. How, again, we can be confident in scientific ideas, even though science itself is tentative. And so if you've ever taken any science, you know that you don't just do something once. You get 10 trials, 20 trials, 30 trials, so that you keep getting the same result. That's the idea of a scientific fact. And that way, anybody who does that gets the same agreed upon result. And so that's why we repeat experiments. If, if you were trying to convict somebody of a crime, you, you probably wouldn't want to do the test just once. We got a lot of replication of our results. But replication isn't enough. There's only so much you can get from one test, even if you do it many, many times. There could be some kind of error. Maybe you don't know how to read the scale correctly, and so you keep reading it incorrectly every single time. Or maybe the scale itself was broken. We've all had a bathroom scale that's either too heavy or too light by 10 or 15 pounds, and it doesn't matter how many times you use that scale, it's going to be incorrect every time. Just because you keep getting the same result every time doesn't mean you understand the cause. What you predict is causing this thing might not actually be it, but you haven't really explored any other options. And so if you think somebody committed a crime and their blood type matches what's found at the scene of the crime, you haven't convicted them of a crime. That's just one piece of evidence. What you'd want is a lot of pieces of evidence, and that's what multiple lines of evidence are. This is the idea that you find a lot of different pieces of evidence from different fields of study that all tie that person to the crime. And we do the same thing in science. So for instance, instead of just blood types, you know, look at all this other stuff you could start racking up to tie someone to the scene of the crime. Right? These things could all tie, for instance, me to a bank robbery. Right? And at some point, if you don't just have my blood type, but if you have all that other stuff of my phone records and the GPS from my car all tying me to the bank, you, I think it would be very easy for you to get a jury to convict me beyond a reasonable doubt. And it, 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 the equivalent in science is sort of that overwhelming evidence where to argue against it would be intellectually uh, indefensible. And again, the more lines of multiple evidence you have, the greater the strength in the conclusion. But science is still tentative. Even if you have all that evidence, it, it still theoretically could be wrong. I mean, maybe I didn't commit the crime. I have an identical twin. He's got my blood type. He's got my DNA. If you're clever enough, you could make tests that would Eliminate that possibility too, check for fingerprints and things like that. Multiple lines of evidence though ha has another big advantage. It helps validate the techniques you use. If you do 15 different things and they all get the same answer except for one, well that last one is where you should be paying attention. Is there something wrong with that technique or does this reveal some terrible error in your whole study? It's very unlikely that things are going to converge on the same answer but all be incorrect. If they were all incorrect, you would expect their answers to be all over the board. So, for instance, if I wanted to find the mass of a ball, I could use a mechanical scale, electrical balance. You, you can, if you work for NASA, <laughs> inertial balance, you know, you could do calculations of force, mass, acceleration, and you get mass all these different ways. Now, you would expect that if you couldn't find the mass of that ball, that these data points wouldn't converge on the same mass. And so you have to ask yourself, why are they all getting the same answer if all of these things are wrong? How do we know that the Earth is 4.55 billion years old? Why is there scientific consensus on this? Well, what we do is we, we look at radioactive decay, and we look at the ratio of radioactive decay of different elements. So it isn't even the same two elements every time. And what we do is we assume that these things were all created at the dawn of the solar system, and so these meteorites have been floating around in our solar system since then, and so if we get their age, it should match the age of the Earth. And even if you look at stuff on the moon also, you see the same thing, that these things tie together at that same common date. And even if you look at ratios of different elements within the same meteorites or between meteorites, we're seeing very strong correlation there. Now, you're not going to find a rock on Earth at 4.55 billion years old because the Earth's crust is constantly getting recycled. But we get close, and it's less than 4.5, which makes sense. And if you look at the age of the sun based on nuclear physics, you end up with about 4.5 billion years old. The universe itself is about 14 billion years old based on the expansion of the universe and the speed of light still is not outside the realm of reason. So I, hopefully you've just gotten a taste of the power of these. I know I pushed through a lot of stuff there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.